nostalgic. <laughs> Not always nostalgic. Recently, a friend of mine moved away from Cedar Key. There was a sale at her house, and I went to the sale after she was gone, and it was kind of sad. And so I relieved my feelings by writing um, about it. Estate sale. With her gone, with him fled, not to see the last lifeblood vanish through the doors. The house is a split cadaver whose remaining organs, soon removed, photographs no longer pertinent sold for the frames, gift potholders still in packaging, some of her small Buddhas, leave little flesh, only bare carpets and stripped walls bruised like thin skin to lie upon the whitening bones. This house, once so fat with treasure, draws in upon itself, toothless, starved after all that feeding. I grew up in a small town in West Texas, which was run by a cadre of old ladies. <laughs> uh, many, of these, many of these ladies were involved in their churches, and some of these ladies were delightful and really did a lot of good. And some of these ladies actually were really good at minding other people's business. <laughs> And some of these ladies even thought they had an inside track with God. <laughs> I think that resonates in this election year. <laughs> Certain public figures share that belief. <laughs> what a, oh, I'm starting with the title, sorry. Mrs. Lambeth thinks it through. What a pity it will be when I no longer am, said aged Mrs. Lambeth, tottering deceptively, supported either side by husky sons-in-law along the curving cobbled walk before the gothic pile her husband ordered built to the glory of God. Thus, Mr. Lambeth, Fred that was, thanked his maker for survival of the crash. A good man, Fred to provide so well for me. I serve the Lord so many ways. The altar guild, whenever I'm free, and all my old dresses go to charity, minus the buttons, naturally. <laughs> <laughs> Who would pop in at lunchtime on my friends if not for me? Though I often eat and run, so much to do, my nap for one. I never spare myself, as you dear boys can see. My caladiums, if they could speak, would certainly agree. Old Johnny said just yesterday, squatting in the loam. They wave their heads when you walk by, Miss Bell. <laughs> Silly old fool, getting slow. Soon I think he'll have to go. And little Fluffy, how she leaps at sight of me. Getting rather smelly, though. <laughs> She'll be put down on Saturday. <laughs> have a schnauzer next. If only I could as easily change my daughters for a stronger breed. <laughs> Thank you, boys. This will do. How happy you must be considering all I've done for you to be able to do for me. I could outlive you all, you know. <laughs> These girls of mine are puny souls. I know my duty and I'll hang on. I'll have a word with young Father Flint, a new font, perhaps. And he will have a word with God. He knows which side his bread's buttered on. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we'll move on to something a little nicer this time. <laughs> 
I enjoy making connections between the different kinds of taste that there are, taste in art and music and clothes and food and colors and literature, all these kinds of tastes are connected. So books have been written about this and I've written poems about it before and this is another one. Color Me. Your peach wool coat, she said, with matching beret and leggings. Peach forever after, the color of winter warmth. My mother loved color and was good at describing it. Also clothes and fabrics. The bright sunburst play suit. That electric blue that so becomes you. Navy dotted Swiss, lemon sprigged dimity. A sundress in chocolate polished cotton with tiered skirt and short bolero. White organdy curtains, the cranberry silk file she wore to parties for church vanilla panji print. I remember the pure deep reds and greens of Christmas time, fur and poinsettia. My grandmother's red knit dress, rich as that first taste of eggnog when brandy and cream burst on your tongue. This, I think, is why children eat their crayons. <laughs> and my last poem is for this lady over here and her dogs. <laughs> I forgot your name. Susan. Susan and her dogs. I mean, what's not to love about dogs, right? Pugs. Two fawn pugs out for a walk today, tug at their leads, confident tails coiled, and tug at my memory of other push-faced dogs I've known, rosy tongues lolling from happy grins, tug at me to nuzzle, to dodge their liquid smooch, marvel at their brilliance, and I know I'd love all that as much as ever though not the small tornadoes of escaping fur they travel in, that spackle clothes and furniture, whatever color they are, dark on light, light on dark, not the locomotive snores fit to wake the dead, nor the pre-dawn demands of doggy needs, blizzard or no, and yet I see their self-important busy wigwag trot, their smushed muzzles, Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs>